The first time I saw a blue whale lunge feeding event, I almost couldn't believe it. It is absolutely a crazy feeding mechanism. The whale literally doubles in size as it's feeding, so it's inflating at this really capacious ventral feeding sac on the underside of the animal, so it's literally inflating with water and food. These questions come to mind. How does that work? <laughs> how does that evolve? And how does such a large whale feed on very, very small prey? And these must be linked in some way. So this is actually a fin whale, which is very closely related to a blue whale. A fin whale is the second largest animal probably to have ever lived by mass. So it's have that nice streamlined shape and it's really easy for this whale to accelerate to high speed. And as it does that, it rolls onto its side, it opens its mouth right at the krill patch. And then as it engulfs this water, you can see its pouch totally engulf all that huge amount of water. And then it spends about 30 seconds to a minute or so actually filtering out all that water. So every Rorqual lunge has those three phases. It has an acceleration phase where it goes up to about three or four meters per second. It has an engulfment phase, which lasts about five seconds. And then it has that filtering phase. It does this over and over and over and over again, sometimes a hundred times a day. So what's unique about our tags is that we were able to integrate not just the sensor data, but also video. So now we can see what the whale is actually doing from its own perspective. Now this whale is out looking for food, so he's going to do one long breath and he's going to dive down. So he's going to dive down to about 100 meters here. So he's diving down, it's getting darker, and he's going to come up from below this prey patch. He's going to start maneuvering his body up towards this prey patch, accelerating up to about four meters a second couple of big fluke strokes and then right when he gets up to that prey patch he's going to open his mouth and engulf all that water and then basically start that filtering process. So you can tell that the whale's opening its mouth because you can see its normal head motions and then you'll see the jaw actually separate and you can actually see the whale's mouth, the bottom of its jaw over there on the left hand side. The rotation of these jaws is amazing. These jaws are about, some of them on a big blue whale they can be up to 12 or 13 feet long and it'll be just the jaws there and they sit in the whale's mouth kind of arched up like this and then as that whale feeds it opens it up basically doubling the area that it can engulf and so it's like imagine like a whole wall of this room coming at you and it's engulfing all that water and then as it starts to close its mouth those jaws will rotate back up so you have a, a minimal uh, area around the edge for the water to actually come back out. The interesting thing about blue whales is that they evolve from much smaller ancestors so about three to five million years ago, whales were really dolphin size, and the oceans went through a rapid series of changes. The effect of those changes creates a lot of whale food and really these enormous patches, super, super dense, and that's what makes their filter feeding mechanism so efficient and allow them to evolve massive body sizes incredibly rapidly in just a small amount of geological time. This diagram shows a blue whale with its pouch, the engulfment capacity, fully expanded. And it shows the model that we have created to measure how much water it can swallow in one gulp. And whales, when they engulf water like this, they're also engulfing prey. So the more prey you can engulf at once, the more efficient you are, and you get so much more energy for that singular effort. And so we think that whales have gotten so big because they're able to engulf huge amounts of energy in a really efficient way. And how many of these do you get around? Well, last week we put out 14 different types of bags. If you're putting a camera on a whale, you can only tell so much. You have to have the context and the interpretation of what's actually happening here. The most common whale behavior is just gliding, just hanging out. And if you have to just watch this video with no context, I could spend your whole career just basically watching whales do nothing, right? So one of the things that's really important in the work that we do is do the interpretation. The blue line here is the depth sensor of the whale. So that's a pressure sensor that measures how much pressure is being applied to that whale. And so then you can interpret that as depth and how deep that whale actually is. The orange line here is the animal's speed. When the animal's going faster, that line is a little bit higher. This red line here is where we are in the video. So right now the whale is coming back up towards the surface. It's about to break the surface here. And then goes back down. You can see that it's gonna do about one, two, three, four, five breaths, and then go back down. The pink line here is a measurement, we call it the animal's jerk. Jerk is the rate of change of acceleration. In addition to the video, we can use all those sensors to actually construct a model of what that whale is doing in space and time. 
how is it actually oriented in relation to the surface and in relation to everything else. So if I'm looking for interesting areas of this whale's behavior, I'm looking at this graph and saying like, okay, well, what's interesting? What's unique? What's actually going on here in interesting environments? And the first thing that catches my eye is this peak in speed here with a rapid deceleration phase. So I know that something's going on there. I know that you have a big um, event going on at that moment. And that is the feeding event. So the whale here is doing its acceleration phase, really pumping its tail, accelerating up there, opening its mouth, and then feeding it as it decelerates. Is that pouch it inflates with water and it slows that whale down from all that drag. Imagine like trying to force equal to your body weight amount of water. That whale is using its momentum and then forcing that water forward as it then starts to filter that water out. <laughs>